other ministers have flown in Concorde before, but this was probably the most significant flight of all, because it symbolized the moment when the British government decided that the arguments had to stop, that the time had come to sell Concorde. On board with Mr. and Mrs. Davis and Lord and Lady Carrington were senior civil servants and the top management of the British Aircraft Corporation. Of all the times I've watched Concorde, this is the only flight which actually left ahead of schedule. And after a flight lasting just under an hour and a half, reaching twice the speed of sound over the Atlantic, Chief Test Pilot Brian Trubshaw brought Concorde back again to a perfect touchdown. Mr. Davis described Concorde as a fabulous aircraft, that had proved itself technically and now had to prove itself commercially. Did you enjoy the flight, Mr. Davis? Yes, thoroughly. Um, um, even more than I thought I was going to, actually. I think the thing that's uh, extraordinary about it is that it's so normal. <laughs> you, know, you don't feel you're doing anything extraordinary at all. What about the potential market for Concorde? What's the lowest that could be sold and perhaps the highest? Well, I suppose that if... Um, if we sold 50 or less, I should be a very disappointed man. If we sold 150 or more, I should be a happier man, and getting happier as it got more. But you reckon that, th that probably 150, uh, there's a very good chance of that? I should have thought that's certainly what we ought to have our eyes on. Hmm? And when do you think that the first orders, BOAC and Air France, will come? By the spring? Well, I, you know, don't like to set time news, but I hope they aren't long... Uh, to be awaited for because I think that they're the critical ones and the rest will then follow so that I shall certainly hope that there'll be early orders. Will the government have to subsidize BOAC in any way to buy Concorde? Well BOAC has not asked the government to subsidize it so that I shall certainly not a great offer of subsidies until I really feel sure they're needed uh, but undoubtedly the government will listen very carefully to what happens in the negotiation between the builders of the aircraft and BOAC and other airlines and see what the problems that they meet are. Now, Concorde, of course, does have problems. It is a noisy aircraft compared, anyway, with the new generation of subsonic jets. Are you confident that these problems will be overcome and that, in America especially, airlines will come and buy it? I think that the, all the evidence is that on entry into service, Concorde will be no more noisy than uh, subsonic jets, uh, perhaps you say the new generation, but uh, certainly the mass of subsonic jets that will then be flying, and therefore there is no reason on that account why it should not be acceptable to the world's airports. And obviously every continuing effort will be put in by the designers to try and design out noise. Are you really convinced that Concorde has got an economic future and it's more sensible to carry on than cancel it? Oh, I'm sure that it's got to be got seen through. Absolutely sure that it's got to be seen through. And it's undoubtedly got uh, a future. Uh, it seems to me clear that uh, the whole purpose of aviation is speed. And if uh, this is the speediest thing there is for the travelling public, well, it's got to be sold. So the government has clearly decided to give Concorde the green light. The next milestone should be next week, when 01, the third Concorde, should make its maiden flight. And with three Concords in the air, there will be even more opportunities for showing the flag and for VIP flights, which should include next year both Mr. Heath and Prince Philip. Richard Dixon, News at 10, Fairford.